Hello, hello. It's Sunny Melendrez, and welcome to the positive side of the radio spectrum. This is the all-new Sunny Melendrez Show, and each week we strive to bring you inspiration and entertainment through storytelling, fascinating guests, exclusive celebrity interviews, and most of all, lots of enthusiasm. You might say we're at the corner of entertainment and inspiration. Now, if you don't want to miss a single episode of the show, don't forget you can always listen on demand at sunnyradio.com slash show. You can also sign up for the all-new Sunny Radio newsletter with all kinds of uplifting videos, audios, and features all designed to put a smile on your face. And now, on with the show. Sunny Radio, sunnyradio.com I cannot tell you how proud I am to introduce you to this week's guest on my show. He is one of America's most exciting Catholic performers. He's a natural MC, a dynamic musical performer, an inspiring speaker, and an expert retreat leader. But most of all, he is my son, Joe Melendrez. Welcome. Well, hey, great to be here. Joe, you know, your mother and I marvel at your amazing positive energy and all that you've done with your talents to inspire young people in your in your short 33 years. So I'd like to share your journey with our listeners and the amazing things that you've been able to accomplish. Well, that, that means a lot. You know, thank you um, for the kind, you know, words that you're saying. I just want to start off by saying I would be nowhere if it wasn't for... Um, God getting me at such a young age. So uh, 15 years old uh, is when I went on a retreat and transformed my life. So I I can't really take credit for much. Also, um, I always attribute a lot to who I am today because of the love of you and mom that played a big role uh, in in my life. So um, yeah, accomplishments, great. They're awesome. But I want to say what's more important is the purpose of why why are you doing what you're doing? Are you living on purpose? And for me, I feel that uh, I there's so much to share, uh, so much love that people can receive, uh, an abundant life that God has for them, uh, and they just got to know about it. And so I feel like it's my mission to share the good news in many different mediums um, that can connect to today's kids, adults, young adults, um, anybody because the gospel is timeless. It is, it is. And you certainly have, have not only embraced it, but you, you are able to, uh, to communicate it to, to everyone, really, not, not just young people, but, uh, but everybody, and you inspire your mother and me uh, in, in doing so. Praise God. Thanks. So let's go back to your 15 years old. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what happened? Yeah, you know, it was funny because I got this kind of like bug to perform. Uh, it was like an eighth grade talent show. Yeah. And um, I had never performed. And in fact, you remember like when I used to sing and like at uh, school programs, I wouldn't actually sing. I just like move my lips. And I was just all about being cool, you know? Sure. And then uh, this girl I liked, Sevilla, she asked me to be in a talent show with her and her friend Alexandra. And I was like, okay, cool. You know, I'll, I'll do it. What are we doing? And she's like, well, we're going to do a dance. And I was like, I don't know how to dance, right? So I, I learned to dance for Sevilla. Once we performed that that song, we did Bye 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 by NSYNC. The year was 1999. And uh, and it was like uh, something emerged out of me like, oh, wow, I like performing. I, I want to learn to be a better dancer, you know? And so I kind of started uh, rehearsing, watching Michael Jackson, Usher, Justin Timberlake, like just, and this is before YouTube, so VHS tapes, you know, practicing in the living room and and so I was like, I'm going to be a performer. That's what I knew. I was like, I love being an artist, love being creative, but this is what I want to do. And then when I was 15 years old, I was invited to go on a retreat by this young man named Santiago Iturbe. Great guy. Uh, really, if it wasn't for his invitation, I don't know if I'd be sitting here having this conversation with you right now. Mm. And he invited me to go on this retreat called Teen Acts Retreat um, at Holy Spirit Parish. Um and it was like literally right up the street from us. And so I was like, okay. Here in San Antonio. Here in San Antonio, yeah. And uh, on this retreat, God touched my life in a really powerful way. 
and I encounter God, I always say it's like the love I have my entire life, all of it, in one moment. And it was too much for my body to contain. I just started weeping. I started weeping. And I knew at that moment that God was real. And I knew that this love that I felt, everybody's got to know about it. It's like, you know, when you hear, hear a hit song, like this song, it just gets you moving. You want to tell everybody about it. Or right. this restaurant, food is so good. You can't help but tear, you right. got to go check this place out. That's how I felt about God. I didn't know how I was going to share God with other people, but I knew that was my new mission. And I've kind of morphed it into using the gifts that he's given me from performing to being an artist, to being creative, uh, to evangelize today. I want to play a cut from your new album called Chosen. It's called God's Calling. Yeah. Tell us about it. Yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy how the song evolved. I, I wrote the song in bits and pieces. Um, and the wild thing is the, the featured artist, he goes by the name Say. And God told me today, hey, invite invite him. His name is Isaiah. I invite Isaiah to to see if he wants to collaborate on the album. So I reach out. I'm like, hey, bro, just want to check in. Uh, if you'd like to collaborate on being a couple of songs of mine. He's like, yeah. He's like, I'm like, when are you going to be in the studio? Because we both use the same producers. And he's like, I'm there right now. When's your next session? I'm like, today. He's like, I'll stay for your session. We we get there and I tell him the concept. We write the chorus immediately. And, it, and the crazy thing is, so the chorus is, you are not alone when God's calling. You can be strong when God's calling. So pick up the phone when God's calling. He died for your sins. Now you are chosen. So... Isaiah didn't even know that the album was called Chosen, that that was a theme, nothing. Really? And it was like God just spoke through his talent. Through, and I was like, wow, this is this is how God does things. And so, um, but even it's crazy, even recently, I, I listened to those lyrics and it's so important to remind yourself you're not alone, um, that you got to be strong. And when God's calling, you can't ignore it. You got to pick up the phone. Only God knows since a child, I've been mindful, but I can't discover the light with my eyes closed, blind to see what was inside. But now I know a love that goes beyond you and I. Yeah, I know. Only 15 when God reached me. I was overcome, unprepared to receive. God showed up, I dropped everything. Tears poured out, I said, Lord, I believe. You are not alone when God's calling. You can be strong when God's calling. So pick up the phone when God's calling. He died for your sins, now you are chosen. You are not alone when God's calling. You can be strong when God's calling. So pick up the phone when God's calling. He died for your sins, now you are chosen. God's calling. God's calling. God's calling. the light called to be light called to be christ called to be kind called to be one called all the time pick up the phone god's on the line no matter who you are now is the time he chose you no need to apply use what you have then glorify his blood covers us now we're alive you are not alone when god's calling you can be strong when God's calling, so pick up the phone when God's calling. He died for your sins, and now you are chosen. You are not alone when God's calling. You can be strong when God's calling. So pick up the phone when God's calling. He died for your sins, and now you are chosen. God's calling. God's calling. God's calling. Oh, 
If you just joined us, that's Joe Melendres and God's Calling from his new album, Chosen. Tell us about what it is you do now, and also, you kind of lead two lives, but they're yeah. both in the same genre. Yeah. So, um, ministry at heart is what I do. So, ministering in a lot of different ways. It's funny, I was listening to a podcast, and they said that, you know, as followers of Christ, we're recruiters. You know, Jesus said, come follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. He wants us to be out recruiting more people for the kingdom. So I look at that as like I'm a recruiter for God. <laughs> um, but I do that in a variety of ways. So um, I speak and perform. So I'll, I'll go give keynote talks and workshops um, to schools, churches, conferences uh, across the country, um, all, all faith-based, all centered around uh, knowing Jesus. And then I also work at a, at a Catholic high school in Los Angeles uh, where I'm a religion teacher and a youth minister out there. So ministry, I, it's funny because I would say, be careful what you pray for. Because I, I, one day I pray, like, if I could live every day on a retreat, that would be amazing. And like five years later, I was assigned to do all the retreats at the high school I work at. Wow. And it was like, whoa, that's a lot of retreats. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, so um, I, I feel like in any, and that's the thing, I feel called to ministry. Some people, hey, I feel called to real estate. I feel called to being a car salesman. I feel called to, you know, being a doctor. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing. You know, keep Jesus at the center of your life and sure. you can be a light for others at all times. Sure. So we can minister in any kind of area. You're right. Um, but yeah, so that's that's kind of the, the work that I do. And isn't it amazing how when you decide you want to do something, whether it's a project, whether it's a career change, wh- whatever it is, people show up. Yeah, I I want to say when I was in college, I... It's wild how I, I found Shamanad in Los Angeles, but I actually had spaghetti with the president like on an impromptu visit to Los Angeles one mm-hmm. day. And he basically said, well, would you think about working at Shamanad? And I was like, was, is that like a job offer? Like, is that how it works? In the world? I didn't know. But it was God you know, leading me from one point. But he just showed up just sure. like that. Sure. Um, and then, you know, it came out. And if I hadn't said yes to the opportunity, I was going to school in Ohio. Um, I wouldn't have met my wife and now we have a, a two year old daughter today. She turned two. So for, for me, it's like, wow. Um, you gotta say yes at times. And and you look back at, uh, and I'm not comparing myself at all, but the Virgin Mary was 13 years old when she received a visit from Gabriel and she said, yes, if she hadn't said yes, we don't know if there'd be Jesus, you know, did God have a plan B? <laughs> Maybe he just had a plan A. And, and when I was, uh, you know, in college, I didn't have a plan B. I was like, this job's going to come through. And literally it came through, I want to say like two days before I graduated. <laughs> so I was putting all all of it on God and say, I, I, I know you're going to deliver. And he did. And, he did. That, and that's the thing. Like if we look at God and his track record, he always comes through. It might be at the last minute, but he's always going to come through. And, you know, it's also, I, I think, uh, ironic, your name is Joseph and you are such a great father. Uh, you've spent the the last few days here with uh, with our granddaughter Antoinette, as you say, we just yeah. had a, a nice party for her. Oh yeah! The amazing part of it all is to see the circle of life and has just you know bringing us even more joy. Yeah, you know, a Pope John Paul II he said, "Life with Christ is a wonderful adventure," and I can see that uh, with the the birth of our daughter. Uh, this undescribable, like indescribable new joy has arrived. And it's funny because we, we look at our lives like, well, what were we doing before our daughter? Mm-hmm. And and the thing is, she's uh, writing. This is the first album that I wrote uh, with her in our lives. So it's caused me to grow a ton as a person, as looking, um, being aware of who I am, my strengths, my weaknesses, um, areas of growth. 
Um, and yeah, how can I improve? And, and as you, it's like, as parents, there's no like parenting one one you got to figure things out. Right. And, um, so my wife, she's amazing. Noelle is incredible. I learned a lot from Noelle. Um, so I want to give her a lot of credit for being such a great mother. Um, but yeah, I, the other thing is being spirit led. We pray with Antoinette every night. Um, now she'll, if we start eating and we don't say our prayer, she'll put her hands together and we're like, Oh, you're right. We forgot to pray and we'll pray. And it's, amen, amen. And it's just so cute. But, um, but yeah, it's just, I'm so thankful. And that's another big thing is, is having this attitude of gratitude for everything, the blessings and the struggles and all the people, uh, in between. You're in front of so many audiences of young people, some of whom may be lost, some of whom are right on the same page as you and, and need that, that fire to yeah. be rekindled. What do you think is the, the biggest challenge facing young people today? I think it's fear. I think fear can be crippling. Fear can cause people to become inactive. Fear can cause people to lose faith. Um, they can doubt themselves. And I think if, if you can overcome your fear and if you can, um, live, uh, for your audience of one, that's God, uh, put your faith over fear. Everything's going to change. Um, I I have a song on my last album called faithful. And I always say, imagine if we had so much faith in our lives that it was like full to the brim and it is overflowing that we just could share it with others on a regular basis. And so I want to say, you know, combat your fear with faith put faith in God. And that's the crazy thing when Jesus, he would show up and, and even when the angel Gabriel showed up to, to Mary, he said, do not be afraid. Jesus would always enter a room, say, peace be with you. He doesn't want us to be afraid. He wants us to be empowered, encouraged, sent forth, but he wants us to figure it out and to really rely on him. So I would say, you know, put, put it's a fears natural, but try to let it go and try to put faith in front of it. Sometimes very hard to do, too. Really hard. And I struggle with it on a daily basis. But I think that's something that can cripple our generation that we need to put let God take over, you know? And what do you say to the parents of these kids? Man, uh, with the, the parents are such a huge influence. I want to say at, at concerts and shows and stuff, you know, some kids, we all have different backgrounds. Some people have great relationships with their moms, dads. Some people don't. Some people don't have a mom, dad figure. So sometimes that can play into their understanding of God. And and one of the biggest things is you want to say you're not alone, that you have a God who loves you unconditionally for who you are, for who you aren't. And if parents can encourage their children to nurture this love, to grow together, to, to read scripture together, to really learn who is Jesus. You know, a lot of times we overcomplicate it when he spoke in ways that everybody could understand. He spoke in stories and parables, you know, so uh, if you could be educated, you could be a doctor, um, you could be someone with no education and you could understand Jesus. And it was the crazy thing is in scripture, we hear of these people who just had a little bit of faith. This person, if I could just touch his garment, I know I'll be healed. If, if we can lower this guy down mm-hmm. from the roof and he sees Jesus, Jesus is going to take care of him. And that's it. It's like all you need is a little, a little spark of faith. Um, and it can take you uh, to places you never dreamed of because it's what God does. You know, I've seen so much of, uh, of what you do with these young people. But I've also seen this, this great relationship you have with your brother. Yeah. And, and, and don't you believe that, uh, that it's very important to... Uh, to connect with your siblings and stay connected and support each other and give each other that, uh, you know, that, that support. Well, the thing is with, with, with God, the more you put him at the center of your life, the more you want to be like him. And, and the thing what God does, he loves unconditionally. And, and I, something I had to learn is to love people uh, as they are. You can't really change people. Okay. People can choose to make decisions that can change. God can maybe transform your life, but there's nothing really you can do to change a person. You have to love them for who they are, you know, and good things, bad things, whatnot. And my brother, as, as a kid, I used to not get along with him. We were opposites, right? I was super neat and clean. You know, he was not, he would shove (laughs) stuff under his bed. And, but it, it wasn't until I realized the value of, of a sibling, of a relationship, um, when I was older. So it wasn't until I was in college that we started developing a strong relationship. And I'm super thankful for him. And the thing is, I've always admired him for his talent. He can do just about anything. 
Um, and, and, and once again, I prayed for him as a, as a kid, I wanted a sibling and praise God. You did. You gave me one. (laughs) You did. You you prayed for a little brother and and you certainly got one. And I see this great relationship that you boys have now. And you know, you're both using your God given talent to live a purpose filled life. Yeah. And I think that you also see it in little Antoinette. She's only two years old, yeah. but already she's showing this wonderful way to to communicate yeah. and to and to bring you uh, what it is uh, you're you're looking for as a father. One of my goals this year is to be more generous. Um, and Antoinette, she kind of gets a thrill out of giving things to people, whether it it's wrapping paper um, or you know a leaf. Whatever it may be. So to see her get excited for giving um, is inspiring for me. Um, so I'm super, super thankful for that. But yeah, I mean, it, just to see life evolve and change in front of you. I was commenting to my wife, Noelle, today. I was like, man, I know this is our first kid, but it seems like she's learning stuff so fast. Like she just learns these new words and the, the way ch- children develop is so incredible. And it's so wild because once we when we had her i remember watching her as soon as she came out and she was looking around i'm like this has got to be wild you just entered this earth uh you know potentially just came straight from heaven to earth like this has just got to be wild you were in a a small womb for so long but something interesting about antoinette is i had a shirt that had jesus on it uh and it says life is better with jesus and before she even know who i talk about what she would point to my shirt and she, she like recognized Jesus mm. and she would point to him. And so now I have a poster in my room and she comes in and she says, Jesus, Jesus. Mm. Like, and it's so special. And I have this little bobblehead Jesus. And, and she, <laughs> she always points to him and she holds him close. And it's like, wow, she recognizes him. She does. And she she really is so much of a, of you and, and, and Noel. And not only that, but what it is we all learn from children. Somebody once said that... Uh, with each child comes the message that God is not yet discouraged by man. Hmm. And, and don't you believe that uh, there is so much to live for, yeah. so much hope yeah. to, to find yeah. in each day yeah. and to breathe mm-hmm. this, this wonderful thing called life? You know, I sometimes she will like a little, a little cries at night and like she has like maybe a little nightmare or something like what could her worries be like, oh, I didn't get in milk. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah. you know, and I think we as we get older, we have these these worries and these burdens and these things that we carry with us sometimes for years. But with kids, they live light. And that and God says, come to me, all who are weary, and I will give you rest. And that's what we got to have that the, the faith like a child, because kids, they come off with fresh. You know, they they come straight from God and they're in this world. And as we grow, we sometimes we, we get different burdens we carry with us. But, yeah, I see her and her joy and to do it over and over. I'll throw up in the air again. I'll throw up in the air again. Yeah. She just wants to to keep doing that. Um, we were just playing hide and go seek before this interview with right, her. Right. And we just did it, you know, with 20 minutes and she's hiding in the same place. Yeah. But she wanted to keep on doing it. And that's the mentality I think we need to adopt. We can learn a lot from kids um and and that's and the kids that they got that faith too they got that strong connection to god wow well joe i i cannot tell you um how proud i am of you you know that uh, that i love you you know that your mom and i are just uh are just so in awe of all that uh, not only what you do but you, you're you're the way you do it and and how how humble you are and, and how easy and quickly you give credit not only to god but to other people who've come into your life yeah. and helped you along the way yeah. Um, this, uh, this album chosen has so much in it. Uh, is there one thing that, that you would want people to know before they listen to it? Yeah, man. Uh, you, you're a chosen child of God. You know, God chose you before you were even born. He had a purpose for your life. He knows where you're supposed to be. And a lot of times we think well, right now, you know, I don't know. I wasted time. I can't No, God wants you right where you are right now. And you can make any decision to to move forward in a powerful way to love and serve him. Uh, and you, you're you chosen. You have a call to think that the, the God who created the sun that rises and sets the moon, that everything that he has a purpose for you. It's like a, it's like a whoa, aha moment. And it's almost like a really for me. Come on. I, maybe somebody else, but me. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You, you know, mm. God chose mm. you. 
and you're a ch chosen child of God. So hopefully in, you enjoy this album. It is streaming worldwide, um, available on all streaming platforms. You can go to joemunges.com, um, get an album there. Um, but yeah, it's this. the music I make is a gift uh, to, to share with y'all uh, the, the gospel, and hopefully it can be encouraging for you along the way. Well, thank God he's chosen you. You are his plan A. <laughs> Amen, I received I that. don't think Praise he had God. a plan B when he, when he created you, Joe. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. Well, that's our show. And I hope you've been inspired and entertained by my very special guest, my son, Joe Melendres. And I hope you'll remember his powerful message. You are a child of God. You are chosen. Bye-bye. Where's the sun? Moon. I see moon. I see moon. What else do you see? Where do you see sun?